so uh, the first thing, I just want to uh, comment on something that Derek uh, Hire stated earlier regarding the one-for-one -one replacement. I think that that needs to sort of be problematized because I'm not, because first of all, DC has adopted the one-for-one -one replacement in the new communities um, policy program, and I believe that it's also sort of been emphasized in the Choice Neighborhood uh, initiative that was intended to sort of counter the negative um, aspects of Hope 6. Uh, so while there's a lot of disagreement on what one-for-one -one replacement means, let me tell you what I think it means in Barry Farm. It means that if you have a six-bedroom or you have a four-bedroom, uh, that when the redevelopment uh, is finalized, you should be replaced into a four-bedroom. Not, in other words, a unit for a unit. And that's the way uh, I think DC Housing Authority and the Deputy Mayor uh, of Planning and Economic Development conceives it, is that it's just a unit for a unit. So I can replace a four-bedroom unit with a two-bedroom unit or one-bedroom unit. You're still getting subsidized housing. And what, in fact, that does is reconstitutes the family. It, it's, it, it, it reconstitutes the kind of families that we want to be part of this inclusionary model. The second thing is, I mean, you know, I cringe, too, when people say, you know, development is coming. Uh, you know, so what do you do? Get out the way. Well, let me just put some, some sort of context to it. You know, if you... Uh, ride the metro, and I no longer ride the metro because it always seems to break down. Uh, you look at uh, Friendship Heights. The uh, average median income in Friendship Heights is in the area of 142, well, certainly above 140,000. You look at Falls Church on the orange line. Friendship Heights is the red line. Falls Church is roughly above 140,000 average. But you take a Congress Heights or Minnesota uh, Avenue Station uh, metro area, and the median average income is roughly 30,000 or less. So there's a major discrepancy or, or difference in terms of the wealth that's in the district, right? And so um, Ed was right to point out that this is one of the most uh, unequal cities that, that we live in. But the development is chasing those with that disposable income. And so you can't sort of build that much uh, in sort of what we call the mainland in DC. So the only area to rebuild is east of the river, right? Uh, because there's, a, there's, there's just a lot of real estate available for you. And certainly there's also a lot of public housing. And let me just get to, uh, really quickly, get to a third, third point. As a cultural anthropologist, I'm interested in uh, constitutions of culture. I'm inter interested in the integrity of culture. I'm interested in cultural values. And, and one of the things uh, that I said earlier, I think we need to sort of provide a, a, a sort of counter narrative. We need to challenge the narrative around cultural pathology. But we also need to decolonize the narrative. And here's exactly what I mean. This is exactly what I mean. Moving people out, denying their right to exist, their right to place, is not new. It's part of the origin myth of being Western. You might find some familiar, some similarity in it with Manifest Destiny. You might find some similarity in the Western expansion. All right. right? So part of the culture integrity and keeping cultures intact is the ritualization of these ideas. And the constitution of being whiteness means that you have to devalue, since we're talking about the concept of value, you devalue what you want to conquer. So now let's take Barry Farm. Let's talk about it. If we're going to be honest here. Okay, but, but hold on a second. I want to give. Well, I'm, I'm going to finalize this, and, I, and I'm going to. Okay, you could. The Barry Farm, in fact, is not only devalued, but is intentionally destruct, destroyed, because it helps to uh, serve a role in this ritualization, this manifest destiny, this conquering the untamable. Right? It's not just about what Neil Smith talks about, this sort of rent gap, that, oh, you know, we seize these uh, opportunities because we want to realize greater profits. It's about the constitution of Western identity. 